right here. It makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your Raise your hands. Hallelujah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. That's all the song says. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Ooh, God's got a blessing. Come on, somebody believe that right there. God's got a blessing. 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 for me. God's got a blessing. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, 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 oh. say God's got, a God's got a blessing. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord. Now, listen, we're going to take it back old school right here. That's just a song that says, for oh, he woke me up this morning and he started me. Oh, oh. Lord is blessing me. Oh, oh, the Lord is blessing me. Everybody say, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, the Lord is blessing me. Everybody say, the Lord is blessing me. Everybody say. Yeah. 
Good evening, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited that we are continuing our midweek on spiritual gifts. So tonight, this is me coming to you with another refresher related to our spiritual gifts inventory. Gracious God, we are grateful as we are learning our spiritual gifts. We are thankful how you've empowered us and how you're preparing us to lead in serving your kingdom. We pray now, God, as we open this study, that you will open our hearts and illuminate our understanding. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we're going to continue in our series on spiritual gifts. And I am so thrilled for the work that we are discovering that we can do here in this body of Christ. If for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, there are two parts of the spiritual gifts inventory lessons available in addition to a conversation that the pastor and I did when we first began. So this is session four in our series on the spiritually gifted church. And so tonight what I wanna do is just really talk about what it looks like to be spiritually gifted and how God is preparing and equipping us using each of the nine gifts. So as a recap, for those of you who are coming on board, keep coming in, hit those hearts, those likes. Also, we'll be posting in the chat the spiritual gifts link for First Baptist Church of Vienna, and this will give you an opportunity to also discover your spiritual gifts. So on last week when we met, we talked a little bit about what it looked like to be singled out for serving. So first week, saved for serving. Second week, set apart for serving. And then last week, I did singled out for serving part one. And we took a look at the spiritual gifts table. And that spiritual gifts table gave us the ability to look at three specific chapters in the Bible that related to spiritual gifts. Because oftentimes we're wondering, where do we find them? They're all over the place. Well, in Romans 12, we see the gifts of prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, generosity, leadership, and mercy. In 1 Corinthians 12, there's wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, distinguishing spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues, helping and administration. And then in 1 Peter 4, we find speaking and service. So tonight, as we jump into our study, I want to talk about singled out for serving part two. Now part two is specifically important because we're gonna talk about the nine individual gifts that are being identified here in the body. Now this is our baseline. This is where we're gonna grow from. This is gonna be our launching point, as you will, as we begin to open up the connection groups, as we begin to prepare ourselves to be trained on the use of the gifts. And with that being singled out for serving last week, I shared with you what my spiritual gifts were. I am so excited about my spiritual gifts because in the first two weeks, we talked a lot about our hashtag, shifting in our gifting. And let me just tell you that spiritual gifts can shift, not that you no longer have the gift, but it's the application and the use of that gift. Now, most of us, we've been in this pandemic for 18 months, and as it continues to go, we were quarantined, we didn't have an opportunity to get out and about, we weren't seeing people. So some of you are quite alarmed when you see that the gift that you had is not the gift that you have now. It doesn't mean you don't have the gift, it's just not the present gift that's being activated for the season and time in which God would have us to use the gifts for which we have been endowed. So with that in mind, as you can see on the screen, my dominant gifts, which is what you will see in your inventory as you're taking it, it will give you your top three dominant gifts. Mine are teaching, administration, and exhortation. The additional gifts that are listed, now as you can see on my spiritual gifts inventory, and as you have taken your inventory and you're seeking to understand what it is, evangelism, prophecy, teaching, exhortation, shepherding, showing mercy, serving, giving, and administration. I have all of the gifts. Each of us, God has given these gifts for us to be able to serve. It's just which gifts in this season in our life are being activated, which is why in our connection groups for our children, our youth and adults, we're gonna take a look in the coming months to study each of these gifts individually. Because we've not been in church, we haven't been in training, so this gives us an opportunity to be equipped for works of service as the Bible speaks about. So tonight I wanna give us a little bit of an introduction on each of the gifts, and we're gonna look at the top nine. Administration, mercy, giving, exhortation, prophecy, evangelizing, pastor shepherd, serving and teaching. 
Now, as we are growing as a congregation, whether you're an older Christian, just took the time and opportunity to become a new Christian, if you're growing in your faith, you're growing in your walk, this is where we get our teaching. This is where our understanding comes from. This is where God steps into our lives and shows us how to build a personal relationship with him based on our gifts. So this will also allow you to hear God when he is speaking specifically to you as it relates to your spiritual gifts. Now, some of you have had an opportunity to download the handout. So if you'll get it out now, we're going to talk about these nine spiritual gifts. We want to be able to have a clear direct understanding of the gifts at this introductory level so that as you sign up for your connection groups we're going to go gift by gift by gift each week from now until spring and this will provide us with an opportunity to not only show how we're gifted but to also show how we're spiritually maturing and growing spiritual maturity is a very big component of the growth in the life of the church, in the life of a family, in the life of the community. So wherever it is that you find yourself, God has a work in store for you. So the link is being posted in the chat. Make certain that you're taking note of it and you're gonna get that spiritual gifts inventory completed. Keep hitting the heart and the like button. I love to hear your comments as you're discovering your gift. And if you see a shifting in your gifting, please let us know how is your gift shifted? How is your gift changing? In what way do you identify and recognize that God is moving you to a greater work for him in building the kingdom of God? So let's begin. The first gift that we wanna talk about tonight as an overview in our preparation for our weekly connection group is the spiritual gift of administration. Now that gift of administration can run the gamut. It fits across a wide spectrum of not only gifts that are used in the church, but gifts that are used on your job, in your organization, in the community, in your family. And so as we look at it, and those of you who have your handout, the gift of administration, that Greek word is kubernesis. And I kind of like that word because it's unique in terms of, if you think about a ship that is sailing, it requires a captain. And so the person with the gift of administration has the ability to steer or to rule or to govern. And so if you're filling out your handout, that's what the answers are, to steer, to rule, and to govern. The individual, the Holy Spirit, enables certain Christians to organize, direct, implement, they plan to lead others in various ministries of the church. So if you are a member of FBCV and you have the gift of administration, there is a work for you to do in this congregation as it relates, what are we organizing? How do we plan? Do you know how to do strategy? How do well do you communicate with others? So this gives us the ability to make certain that groups of people are guided toward a specific goal or destination. Sometimes when we see our gifts, we're like, I don't like paperwork. I don't wanna sit behind the phone. But as you know, that's just one type of way to use your gift of administration. And so the gift of administration, when you think about how God wants to use you, it will give you an opportunity to let the Holy Spirit speak to you, who is the one that gave us the gifts, to actually determine how we want to use them. And as you're getting registered and preparing for your connection group, your number for gift of administration, it may not be high, that may not be your dominant gift, but we are still in the body of Christ to learn how to utilize the gift so that when we're called upon, we can exercise that gift for the benefit of not only the church and community, but to the glory and honor of God. As you'll see here, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and Titus 1, 4, and 5 will allow you an opportunity after we're done today to continue in your study on how the gifts are to be used and to allow yourself to really look at opportunities that may have passed you by to use the gift of administration. But now it will allow you to sit tall and confident knowing that when an opportunity does come that you're trained and equipped and prepared to utilize the gift, the spiritual gift of administration. The second gift I wanna talk about tonight is the spiritual gift of mercy. The spiritual gift of mercy. All Christians are called to be merciful because God has been merciful to us as it talks about in Matthew 18 and 33 and Ephesians 2, 4 and 6. Now the Greek word, if you're filling out your handout, is aleio, aleio, and that means to be patient and compassionate. 
Some of you have that gift of mercy. You're so warm. You're so loving. You're so patient and compassionate. And it doesn't always mean going to the hospital and doing hospital visits or going to the nursing home. It could be the time that you saw an accident on the side of the road and you stopped. Or it could be the person who ran out of gas and you offered a helping hand. This is a gift of mercy. And the way the Holy Spirit has so positioned this gift, the gift of mercy to some in the church is to love and assist those who are suffering and then allowing yourselves to be able to walk with them. So you're a person who is patient and compassionate. And there may be times when we're here at the church, there may be times when you're out and about in the community and you may see someone who is saddened by a situation or circumstance. And because you have the ability to show mercy, you come alongside them and you comfort them. This is the spiritual gift of mercy. It allows us to be able to be those individuals where God is saying, I need you to be the person in human form that comes along my other children and provides them with a level of comfort and patience and compassion so that they too can get through whatever it is that they are facing. And as you're thinking about your Bible study and your personal time or some quiet reading, as you'll see here, Romans 12 and 8, Matthew 5, 7, Luke 10, 30 through 37, James 3, 17, and Jude chapters 22 and 23. I say that because Jude is only one book, so I want you to look for other verses. These are two, the two chapters that are there. So make certain that as you are reading the book of Jude and as you're studying the others, that you see how mercy is applied in scripture. Look for opportunities for the Holy Spirit to prick your heart, to give you that ability and desire to exact your gift in the world so that people can see Christ through you. The spiritual gift of mercy. Our next gift is the gift of giving. And oftentimes when we think about giving, we think about money and our resources. And whereas that is a very big part of bringing our tithes and offerings into the church and to be gifted for the use of service, the spiritual gift of giving, and that Greek word, if you're following along in your handout, actually has two meanings. And I love this because oftentimes we fall into one of these traps. So as you will see, the first word is Metadenomi, metadenomi, and it simply means to impart or to give. If you're filling out your handout or you're taking notes, it means to impart or to give. I want to impart my wisdom. I want to impart some understanding. I want to give of my time. I want to give of my talent. I want to give of my treasure, and that is important. But the second Greek word that is associated with the spiritual gift of giving is haplotes, haplotes. And I think that that is a very interesting word because what it means is to be sincerely or sincerely generous and without pretense or hypocrisy just like the word of god to call us out when we're not doing what he expects us to do with a cheerful and glad heart this this spiritual gift of giving if you are a true gift giver whether it is your time your talent and your treasure you do it joyfully and from your heart you don't do it with expectation of receiving something in return the spiritual gift of giving doesn't have quid pro quo attached to it. So in the church where you see this gift actualized is through ministries and through missionaries and people who don't necessarily have an opportunity or means of their own to be able to receive that from other people. So those individuals may show a characteristic of hospitality or they may have the ability to just spread joy and they always have an attitude of gratitude. This is the spiritual gift of giving and more reading and to your understanding can be found in Romans 12, verse 8 and 13, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5, chapter 9, verses 6 through 15, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 37, Galatians 4, 15, and Philippians 4, 10 through 8. This is the spiritual gift of giving. As we're moving forward, one of my favorites, which is one of my gifts, it was number three in my top three, is the spiritual gift of exhortation. I love encouraging people. I think it is so important to come alongside individuals and when they're down or having a difficult time, to be there for them in their corner, in their court. But additionally, it's okay to give someone an attaboy or a high five or an girl and tell someone what a great job they've done. So there are different ways in which we can use our encouragement in order to be able to spur people on to the greatness that God has in store for them. 
If you are doing your handout tonight, the gift of exports, exhortation, the word is parakaleo, parakaleo, that's literally to come alongside, and that is simply to exhort to call upon, to allow ourselves to encourage and to strengthen. Isn't it amazing how when we hear the word of God or someone is praying over us or we hear a preached word or we're listening to music that it gives us the gift of exhortation. It encourages us from our soul and then from the inside out, we're then able to give that back to other people. So the spirit of God gives this gift to people in the church to strengthen and encourage those who are wavering in their faith. I think that we can all say that we've been there at some point or time that we have been wavering in our faith when we thought about whether or not we were going to be able to get back to worship and seeing one another whether we were wavering in our faith in the midst of this pandemic and if we would have jobs or we were wavering in our faith if things would change on the social horizon as it related to social justice and advocacy every step of the way the gift of exhortation can be utilized by someone who calls themselves a believer, a Christian. Whereas your number for exhortation may not have been high, if you had a score of any number in exhortation, come alongside another believer. Come alongside someone who's not saved. Encourage them in their journey in this life because we all need encouragement. For additional study, you can see Romans 12 and 8, Acts 11 verses 23 through 24, as well as chapter 14 verses 21 and 22, and chapter 15 of Acts, verse 32. This is the gift of exhortation. The spiritual gift of prophecy. What an exciting gift for those of you who have it. It allows you to receive that Holy Spirit divine word that can be ushered through you onto another person so that they can understand and know what God is saying. The spiritual gift of prophecy the Greek word is prophopatea, prophopatea, and it simply means if you're completing your handout tonight to receive, to deliver the divinely inspired word. Now that word can come from a preacher, a teacher, a pastor, a missionary. Children even have divinely inspired words by God because the wisdom and knowledge that God allows to flow through them gives them the ability to speak what God says to them. The Holy Spirit gives the gift of prophecy to some believers to make God's heart known and to edify the church, to make God's heart known and to edify the church. Now, I find this interesting because some of us, many of us have had a prophet come to us to prophesy a word that may or may not be from God. And the reason why we're studying these gifts individually is so that when you hear someone say, this is what God said to them on your behalf, you want to line it up with the word of God. You want to go back to what God has been revealing to you. And you want to make certain that the word that you are hearing is the word that was divinely sent by God for you. This gift for the benefit of both believers and unbelievers serves as a sign that God is among us as found in 1 Corinthians 14, 20 through 22 to 25. So take time to study and see how the gift of prophecy is actualized in the word so that when you see it in the world, you will know that not only the word is true, but that vessel that gives it to you is an authentic one sent by God. You can find additional study in Romans 12, verse 6, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 5, Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 in 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. This is the spiritual gift of prophecy. The spiritual gift of evangelism. This is so important. I love that you guys are typing in the chat. I am so excited that you're hitting those hearts and those likes and that you're sharing how you yourself are seeing the spiritual gifts actualized in your life and in the life of other people. I think that it is amazing how God illuminates our understanding and provides us with the ability to know that he is speaking directly to us, to know that he is in the lives of our loved ones, to know that he is flowing through the church, through his people, so that we can be moved by him to serve. The spiritual gift of evangelism. All Christians are called to evangelize. Whether you had a high number or a low number, all Christians are called 
to evangelize and reach out to the lost with the gospel according to Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. We know it as the Great Commission or the Great Commandment. And we are given, some are given this extra measure of faith and effectiveness in this area, which may be why you scored higher than other areas as it relates to the gift of evangelism. If you are doing your handout tonight or if you're taking notes, the Greek word for the gift of evangelism is egulalistes. Now, I think this is an interesting word because it literally derives itself from the Greek of letting us know one who brings good news. <laughs> Don't we all want to bring good news? Don't we all want to hear good news? And it makes us feel wonderful when good news is present. And so this word is also found in two other places in scripture outside of Matthew 28, 18 to 20. It is also found in Acts 21, verse 8, and 2 Timothy 4 and 5. Now evangelists are given this unique ability by the Holy Spirit to clearly and effectively communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Now I want you to make certain that you hear that definition because there are many people who put the term evangelist in front of their name. They use it as a title. And so as we're coming across individuals, as you are discovering your spiritual gifts, as you are identifying who these authentic individuals are in the life of our church, in the life of the world as a whole, there's a description given by God for these individuals. From the Holy Spirit, it says evangelists are given the unique ability by the Holy Spirit to clearly and effectively communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Baseline definition, one that should be followed so that we are clear in our understanding about who God appoints to speak his word in the manner in which it should be done. These individuals go out around the world, some as missionaries, some as pastors and teachers, some as prophets, some as everyday individuals, since we are all called by God to evangelize, which is to share the good news, some have the appointment, if you will, to be evangelists, and that gives them that ability to go out and share the gospel and the word of God. And in the church, you will see these individuals exercising their gift, just not in the house, the church, but also in the kingdom of God out into the world. So with this in mind, additional research and study, see Ephesians 4.11. Acts 8, 5 through 12, and 26 through 40. Now those are chapters and verses where you will find it in Acts, but then also 21 verse 8 and Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The spiritual gift of evangelism. So as we're getting ready to start our sign up for our connection groups, both for cool kids and quarantines and adults, this will give us an opportunity for families, individuals across the spectrum of our church and community to be able to study these gifts individually. So tonight, this is just an overview of the gift so that we all come to our Bible study in the same manner, with the same understanding, and on the same page. I don't want us to be confused about what the scripture is saying. We've heard a lot of different things about spiritual gifts based on where you come from and whatever denominations that you've grown up in. But as we're beginning this study here, we're going to walk through the word and walk through the gifts so that we are all on the same page, listening for God to show us how to serve, not only in these pandemic times, but how to grow forward as we are moving the way Christ has designed us to. This is the spiritual gift of evangelism. The spiritual gift of pastor teacher, the person who stands up before us and gives us the preached word of God, that person is the shepherd and the pastor and that individual carries different responsibilities. No one should ever take the gift of pastor shepherd for granted. This is extremely important. And God literally puts a hedge of protection around this individual who is called by God to the right place where they need to be in the season that God desires them to serve. Because in the scripture it says, touch not God's anointed. And that anointing falls fresh on the pastor and shepherd. And this gift is closely related to the gifts of leadership and teaching, which are qualifications 
of also the pastor. The pastor should be able to lead. The pastor should be able to teach. The pastor should be able to communicate. And if you're filling out your notes or you're taking notes tonight, the gift of pastor shepherd, the Greek word is poemen. P-O-I-M-E-N, and it literally means shepherd or overseer, which is why it says here they carry different responsibilities. The pastor is responsibility for the facilities of the church. The pastor is responsibility for the membership that sits in the pews of the church or on the parking lot or on the Zoom or on the Google Meet or wherever we're finding ourselves these days. The pastor is responsible for the spiritual growth and development and the overall stewardship of the members that are brought into the body of Christ by the moving of God and the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you think of that in the context of the role of pastor, it is more than just preaching. It is a level of stewardship and engagement, making certain that the pastor is in the study of the word, that he is hearing God speak, that that individual allows themselves to sit at the feet of God, to sit at the throne of Jesus, so that way they can hear and understand exactly how to teach and to lead and to guide. Now, pastors are called shepherds because their calling and gifting are much like those who care for sheep. In that sense, the shepherd will always go out and look for the sheep because the sheep can wander just like we wander. We get off on a tangent. We get angry. We have idiosyncrasies. We're listening to this and listening to that and eating from different tables when it comes to preaching. And I caution you in this season when we're in a pandemic and we have at our disposal a lot of the word in a sense that you can get off one service and go listen to another. You can go to this Bible study. You can go to that Bible study. And I challenge you to make certain and caution you as well that make certain that the Bible studies and the teachings that you're listening to line up with the main house, the place where you have your church membership so that you are not led astray. And then you begin to question, you know, what you hear here in this house. Because if this is the house that God has designed for you to be in, if this is the house where your gifts are to be utilized and serve, make certain that your first word is coming from FBCV and the leadership and the pastor. So that way, as you're going out and about and you're hearing other things, you can match that gospel truth up with what may not be so gospel. And that's important. And I know you're out there like, oh, my God, I've heard so much of this before because all of us have set it set at teachings and have gone to conferences and workshops. And we're like, wait a minute. That doesn't line up with what I know to be true about the word of God. And this is why it's important that when you call a pastor and a shepherd, that that individual also has a relationship with God to the extent and the point that beyond the chatter outside, he hears in his heart and knows that God has equipped, called, trained, and prepared them to lead that body that they are appointed to. The goal of the pastor is to reveal God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit to the people who need it. And this is why it says they carry different responsibilities. This is extremely important. This is why the pastor can teach a single word on Sunday and we're all sitting there like, oh my God, how did they know? It's because the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit has given that pastor a word that speaks to that pastor that allows him to feed the sheep. We all have different diets. We all need something different in every season of our lives. And that appointed and anointed person that serves in this role has the ability to hear from God on every single member that is a part of their church. And this is why it's important that we remain humble as we seek to be led. And this is why the pastor, as it says, the Holy Spirit gives the spiritual gift of pastor to some to humbly teach them to guide them and protect them and lead them in the mission that God has for the church. It's clear that we are all in agreement, that we all understand, that we all identify how the pastor is set here so that way we, when we're called upon to lead and to serve, that we know as the sheep of this house that we hear our shepherd and follow him because he is also a sheep that is following God. For additional research, you can find information in Ephesians 4.11 Jeremiah 3:15, Acts 20:28, 20, and John 10 verses 11 through 18. This is a spiritual gift of pastor shepherd. Spiritual gift of serving and ministering. I know that was heavy, wasn't it? Oh my God. But this is what our understanding does. This is what discipleship does. This is what Christian education does. It teaches us to understand the word of God so that we can move the way we are designed to move to do the work 
of God as we have been appointed and assigned. The spiritual gift of serving and ministering. And if you are filling out your handout, the gift of spiritual of serving and ministering, the Greek word is diakona and antilepsis. Now these two are very important and they, they serve in two capacities. So that is to love in helping others, to act in love in helping others. That's what we're here to do. If you have a servant's heart, if you serve in any capacity of leadership, if you are a congregant of this church and you're just sitting and listening to the word of God, we all have the gift of serving and ministering because it allows us to cover a wide variety of opportunities that come available in the church. We've already given out our call for October, November, December, Soul to Souls, in our season of celebration, our thanks and giving, coming with the Christmas tree lighting. There are so many ways in which we here are giving opportunities for individuals to use their spiritual gift of serving and ministry. Now, this may not be any of your top three, but if you scored at any level in serving or ministering, this is where you come in. And as you can see, the Holy Spirit endows some believers with the gift to fill many gaps of ministry and meet needs of the church as fulfills the Great Commission. I want to say that again and make sure that you can see it on the screen. The Holy Spirit endows some believers with this gift to fill the many gaps, the many gaps of ministry and meet the needs, meet the needs of the church as it fulfills, as it being FBCV fulfills the Great Commission. This is extremely important that we all identify and understand that there is a work for all of us to do. Everyone has an assignment. Everyone has an assignment. Everyone has an assignment. And that assignment allows us to act in love and in helping others. We see people with these gifts in Acts 16, 1 through 7, 1 Corinthians 16, 15 through 16, and so many others. Now, the individuals who are gifted in this way know in their heart they see a need and they run right away to meet that need. They don't hesitate, they don't wait. Sometimes you're bringing needs to us saying, hey, church family, church leadership, there's a need out here. We need people to get involved and get engaged. It takes all of us to not only see the need, but many of us to activate ourselves to meet the need. For additional study, as it relates to the spiritual gift of serving and ministry, ministering, Romans 12, 7, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 7, and verse 28, Acts 20, 35, 2 Timothy 4, 11, and Revelation 2, 19. Thank you for hitting those hearts and those likes. It means a lot to know that you are receiving the word of God as the Holy Spirit is imparting it into your heart and into your spirit and revealing to you how it is he desires for you to serve and to lead and to know and to grow. This is what we do here. And as we are getting prepared for our connection group, I am gonna issue a special and specific challenge to those of you who have the spiritual gift of teaching. Now the spiritual gift of teaching is designed for us to be able to do the work of God in Matthew 28, as we are discipling, equipping, training, and preparing. If you're filling out your notes tonight, the word is didaskalos didaskalos. This is an extremely important word and it simply means to teach and instruct, to instill doctrine, explain and expound. Now that's a mouthful. Just like Pastor Shepherd, the gift of teaching doesn't come without its warnings. It says right here in James 3 and 1, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and my sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with a greater strictness. Those of you who teach will be judged with a greater strictness. Now, I, I find this to be absolutely outstanding and amazing because one of my top three gifts <laughs> is teaching. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt when I don't take the time to prepare, when I am not in the study of the word, when I am not sitting at the feet of Jesus, asking him to illuminate my understanding, if I'm not taking seriously this gift that God has given me, then I run the risk of leading someone else astray. I run the risk of causing someone to fall. I run the risk of not being able to lead someone to Christ. I run the risk of allowing my gift to be benched because I have misused it. 
So I want us to clearly understand when now, tonight, as you are listening, I'm putting out the call to those of you who have top three teaching gifts and those of you who scored anywhere on the gifts because there are different levels of teaching. Not everyone is called to teach on a platform. Not everyone is called to teach in a classroom. But those of you with the gift of teaching also have the ability to do research. You have the ability to come alongside me in this journey as we put together our content team. It's going to take all of us to design teaching, to design curriculum, to make certain that people are trained and prepared. Those of you who are trainers, have the capacity in your professional life to also facilitate and lead and guide. So there is a difference between the gift of teaching for the purpose of imparting the word of God and the gift of facilitating and instructing so that people will know where to go and how to get there. So as we are embarking together on this journey, I want us to make certain that we clearly understand, one, how the gift of teaching shows itself in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit gives certain people the spiritual gift of teaching so that they would help the church fulfill her ministry as a pillar and a buttress of truth, as it says in 1 Timothy 3.15. Without this gift, hear me now, without this gift, the church would quickly fall into error and sin. We don't want that. We don't want to fall into error, and we don't want to fall into sin. We don't want to fall into people thinking they know what they don't know. We don't want to fall into people reading the word and not having a clear understanding of what the word means. We don't want people, you know, running the mug trying to figure out what they do. We don't want our sheep all over the place not knowing where their shepherd is. This is extremely important because teaching allows us to put ourselves in the construct of how God has designed the church so that as we're growing and as we're moving and as we're leading out in the community, as we're exercising not only our spiritual gift, but living up to our mission and vision, it gives us the ability and the capacity wherever we are in the world to pull from the word of God and use the word of God effectively. Now, I, that's very important that we learn and know how to use the word of God effectively. It, it, we do not want to pull scripture out of context because it seemed good for the situation. We don't wanna pull scripture just to beat it over someone's head so they can be whipped, if you will, into submission because we're manipulating a situation or circumstance. This is why it says, without this gift of teaching, the church would quickly fall into error and sin. We don't want an error, E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. And we certainly don't want an E-R-A, an error, of errors and sin and so it behooves us to make certain we identify who the people are with the top three gifts any individual who had a number in their gifts scoring column so that way you can be trained because remember there's a shifting in the gifting this may not be your season to teach maybe at one point that was your season but now god wants you to move somewhere else so someone else can move up higher so we're going to train every member of the church the whosoever will let them come to the connection group for children, youth, and adults, that you may learn more about the gift because the gift is there, but it is through the nurturing, equipping, and training and preparing for the use of the gift that it then becomes activated because you see differently. You see God's needs around the world and in your neighborhood and around where you are in these Virginia DMV streets. It gives you the capacity to see a need and meet it based on the training and the equipping that you will receive from this house. So additional study related to the spiritual gift of teaching, Ephesians 4, 11, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, Romans 12, 7, James 3, 1. This is the spiritual gift of teaching. We're connecting, that's the end of my study, but we are connecting through gifting, and our connecting through gifting will come through our connection groups during the week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Make certain that you click the link that is found in the chat box where the spiritual gifts inventory can be found. Psalms 139 and 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. 
you can claim this scripture if you are exercising and utilizing your gifts. If at any time you've experienced the hand of God at work in your life and you knew that it was him that came alongside you and ushered you in to something new that was destined and designed for your life. Our cool kids, they are so excited and so ready and I'm excited for them. They are going to be learning about the spiritual gifts by the biblical characters who had those gifts. Our quarantines, oh my God, I so love that name. Our quarantines are going to continue. That's their name. It's who they've been during this pandemic. There's so many things in life that we can never give back to them. But one of the things that we can do is equip them, train them, and prepare them so that they are ready to go out into the world and serve. And then for you adults, I'm so excited about your connection group. I'm looking forward to great and amazing things. So from October, November, December, January, February, March, and April, we are going to cover all nine spiritual gifts in an in-depth capacity because I want you also to be able to learn how to identify spiritual gifts in others. I want us to grow and be mature in our faith and in our walk that we can say, hey, there's something special about you. I want you to take this spiritual gift inventory. I want you to discover your gifts. I want you to come alongside me and partner with our church and be here for our study in the word so that as you're growing and maturing, you too can learn your gifts. I am so grateful and excited for this opportunity. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your love. We are the First Baptist Church of Vienna, a spiritually gifted church 